Liberation greetings to all and sundry. My people of Amazonia, my dear people of the Southern Cameroons, my name is John Akuro and today is May 19, 2022. I bring hearty greetings to all and sundry, especially to all the brave warriors of our liberation movement. And I like to say and always reiterate that you all on ground zero, be you a frontliner, a backbencher, or just one who respects ghost towns and lockdowns, or just one who forwards messages and reaches out to people in the various communities to do mobilization, trust me, you are my hero. Because by your actions, by your devotion, and by your determination, we are making it big by day and by night. We are making tremendous progress, and our determined march towards Boya is unparalleled. My dear people of the Southern Cameroons, my dear people of Amazonia, today we are going to be examining some very important issue. I know that uh, a good lot of us have had the opportunity to either watch uh, the Republic of Cameroon's uh, opposition leader, Maurice Camto, or you might have read uh, articles about what he said on an international television station regarding the situation in Amazonia, the situation in the Southern Cameroons. And so it came to pass that Maurice Camto has started walking back his words taking back the words that he had thrown out before, denigrating our cause, denigrating our people, and claiming that La Republique du Cameroon had done its history. And so they will never backtrack on the issue of federalism. Today, he begins saying that decentralization is a little too late to address our concerns and begins priming that it is only federalism. And that federalism should come as a result of, uh, you know, talks facilitated by France, the United Kingdom, the African Union, the UN, and uh, the United States of America. I know that some are getting excited about that kind of backtracking, but I'm also very confident that a good lot in our midst are looking at it very critically because whatever the circumstances, that is the talk that should have been spoken way back in 2016 or early 2017 because by February 9, 2017 when our own partisan Wilfred turned the trajectory of the consortium from seeking a return to federalism or to a, fe to, uh, a federal system linking La Republic du Cameroon to the Southern Cameroons we had turned our back completely to anything that ties us together with La Republique du Cameroon. I'm going to take time to delve into that thoroughly so that we understand where this is coming from, the intention behind this, and so that we get better informed and better educated and so we are ready to continue to forge ahead with our quest for total freedom. There is a lot, lot, lot to gain when you know. When you don't know, you easily get misled and you easily get carried away by stories that are not true. So before I get into the vif of that communication, I want to make a quick stop on some information that is circulating on social media right now and it is moving on top speed. You know, certain things that are rumor and that can have some falsehood and that La Republic du Cameroon sees as being a little window of discouragement, of throwing, you know, confusion in our midst and causing us to start hitting our heads, they make sure it goes around like wildfire. And that's exactly what is happening right now. I received from about seven to eight different sources early this morning uh, a letter or an article Purportedly written by, or not purportedly, it's actually written by Archbishop Andrew Kia of the Bermenda Ecclesiastical Province. 
And that letter, when I looked at it critically and tried to research, it's one whole year old. I mean one year old. That letter that's talking about synods. And that letter, when I say it's one year old, it's not a joke. And that letter, it's about meetings. It's about a workshop. It's about, you know, um, uh, I mean, a synod of the Catholic Church. A synodal conference of the Catholic Church that would take place in Rome in 2023. And because the church, you know, is now living in a period of synodality, they try, therefore, as much as possible when they have those kind of meetings to break up. Like, it's just like you have a workshop, okay? Like, have a seminar, let me call it like a seminar, a training seminar. And during this seminar, people have to get into little commissions or into workshops in order to better examine some feeding uh, items and then bring them back to the plenary where everything will be harmonized and at the end of the day, a common position taken. So the first thing therefore to note is that in as much as that letter is authentic, I insist it's authentic because I took my time off to verify the source of the letter and to be sure about every single word. In as much as that letter is authentic, number one, it is one year old. And number two, the fact that the Northwest and West regions are lumped up in one synod. And then the literal and southwest are lumped up in another synod. This is simply a kind of coincidence because they are not unique in those particular synods. This is a simple organization towards a meeting that will be held in Rome in 2023. So these are simply working groups. Now, let's leave that therefore to come back to the basics of how the Catholic Church is organized in our situation. Of course, it is no secret to anyone that the Catholic Church is organized in ecclesiastical provinces. And from time immemorial, the southern Cameroons, I mean the southern Cameroons, what the people of La Republic of Cameroon refer to as Northwest and Southwest, have always been the two places or an area that represents an ecclesiastical province of, on its own. An ecclesiastical province. So the Bishop of Boya, the Bishop of Kumbo, the Bishop of Kumba, the Bishop of Manfi, all of those bishops make up. And even, I think there should be a bishop, the Bishop of Bamenda really should be the Archbishop himself. All of this make up what we call the Bamenda Ecclesiastical Province. So the Catholic Church, Rome, is not about, the Catholic Church in Rome is not about to redraw the ecclesiastical provinces in our case, or within what they, some people refer to as Cameroon, including the Southern Cameroons. No. Listen, the Douala Ecclesiastical Province includes the West. That is made up of the littoral and the West region of La Republic du Cameroon. That's what makes up the Douala Ecclesiastical Province. The Bamenda Ecclesiastical Province makes up Northwest, Southwest. The Yawunde Ecclesiastical Province makes up the center, the south, and the east. And of course, you know that the Garwa, I think it's Garwa or Marwa Ecclesiastical Province, is made up of the north, the far north, and the Adamawa. That is how the Catholic Church is organized in Cameroon. And one thing, therefore, that we should note is that, as a matter of fact, you don't go from being an ecclesiastical province down to the synod. No. You leave the synod, you move up to ecclesiastical province, then you move up to the national level, and then to the, in, to the international level that brings us to uh, together as a universal church under the papacy in Rome. So my people of Ambazonia, my people of the Southern Cameroons, the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church is not about to carry out 
a conspiracy with France and La République du Cameroon to divide the Southern Cameroons attach part to the West region of La République du Cameroon and attach the other to the neutral region of La République du Cameroon. That is not true. So that part of what is found in that article is absolutely unfounded. We should note, like I said earlier, that La République du Cameroon will vague a lot of information like this because they know that there's been some misunderstanding between us and the church and the Christian church. And so they need to amplify that so that we have several fronts to be fighting on. The more the fronts you have to fight on, the greater the possibility that you fail. That is what the Republic of Cameroon has been trying to do. And I want us to take a careful look at the pattern. Number one, the Republic of Cameroon has fought so much to pit us against our own people. That is, turn the Amber Boys against the people. Turn the liberation movements against the people and the people against the liberation movement and the people against the Amber Boys. By doing what? Number one, they infiltrated the ranks of the Amber Boys with fake Ambers and intensified kidnapping for ransom to a level never before known. All these vexing things with people claiming their Ambers with the intention of turning the people against their own very aspirations for freedom. In some places, we have seen that they were able to manipulate the people right to the point where the people even came out that they were protesting against the same freedom they are seeking. We saw that in Oku. We saw that same thing happen in, um, in, uh, in Balangi. We have seen it happen before somewhere in Balikumbat. My people of the Southern Cameroons, be wise. I say, be wise. Always stay with your eyes open. That's what sometimes, even unknown to us, they have gone ahead to clone Facebook pages of key figures in our liberation movements. So they use those Facebook pages. Of course, one of the key victims is Mark Barra, with his news outlet, Barretta News. They created something called Barretta News on Facebook, and they use that to send out Fake information, information that's against the struggle, information that gives the impression that even some of us in this movement are regretting that we started this movement at all just in a bid to confuse the people, turn us against ourselves. They did that. They have cloned one of my Twitter accounts and tried to use that to create confusion, to send out messages that have nothing to do with my thought pattern. Nothing to do with the position I hold as far as our liberation movement is concerned. If you don't hear it from me, tell you that I'm no longer part of this liberation movement, it is not for me. If you don't hear it from me, tell you that seeking freedom is bad, which is a thing I will never do, not even at the point of the bayonet. You hear that kind of thing? You see it in written form? No, it does not come from me. It doesn't look like me. You see something claimed, the claim is coming from me, saying, oh, it's a bad thing that we did, we are regretting, we are begging for forgiveness. It is not from me, because I will never, ever, as far as I'm concerned, the only bus stop that we have and that I have is Boya. Nothing short of that. I say, no less, no more. Remember, I have said on this platform several times that anytime you settle for less than you deserve, you will end up with less than you settled for. Anytime you settle for less than you deserve, you will end up with less than you settled for. I have said this over and over and over and I have never changed. I will never change. Uh, no, I will never change because as far as I am concerned, the only thing that has brought me into this movement is to ensure that will bequeath to generations upon generations of Southern Cameroonians, of Amazonians to come, a free country. I mean, a free country. A country that creates opportunities for all without distinction. A country where 
Every life is sacred, not only the lives of prominent politicians. A country where there will be equal opportunities for everyone, where you will not be given a job, a contract, or granted a scholarship on basis of who you know, or basis of whose child you are, or which political party you belong to. That is the kind of country that we seek to create and to bequeath to generations upon generations of Southern Cameroonians. A country full of possibilities, where we will define our development priorities, where we will cause our young people to have the opportunity to explore their technical know-how, to explore their geniuses, so that at the end of the day, we will have a country where we have our own creators, our own inventors, a country where we have an educational system that trains people to come out and be job creators, not training people to come out and be running after a public service code as the only way of survival. That is the kind of country I believe in. That is the kind of country I am sacrificing my everything to make sure we create, to make sure we, you know, we birth so that generations upon generations of southern cameroonians coming will know that there was a generation that decided to sacrifice everything to make sure that they have a better country that they have a place to live in that they have a place they can call home with all the pride where they will be considered as human beings not as subhumans where freedom of speech and of expression will reign supreme my dear people of the Southern Cameroons, the pattern, as I, as, as I explained a while ago, is therefore clear. All this misrepresentation is simply to make sure that they open as many fronts as possible against us. So we dissipate our energy and we'll be unable to focus on La Republic du Cameroon and flush them out of our territory as we are already doing. So like I said a while ago, they have been cloning our accounts on Facebook, claiming our accounts on, on WhatsApp, claiming our accounts on Twitter, and all want to promote the same kind of thing I'm talking about. So they created fake ambas here and there to bring a lot of torture and suffering on the people so that the people would turn against their true sons, their own boys who are dying for their freedom. And of course, in some communities, people are falling prey, going and showing camps, giving directives of where this is where they are, that's where they are. You are very children. My people of Amazonia. Because we have allowed them to do this thing over and over, they have now told themselves that they have total impunity. They can get into our houses, tie us up, rape our wives, our mothers, our daughters in front of us and at the end of the day, flock us up and tell us, go to hell and they know we will do nothing. Listen, my brothers and sisters of Amazonia, we have to rise to the occasion. What is happening right now with those 40 bike riders is something we must not tolerate. Don't sit in your house and say, those bike riders are not mamundi. So you cannot ask that they should account for the 16 who are now missing. Because now we know where 24 are. They are being caught marshaled before military tribunals. So what crime? For doing what? For simply taking an initiative to go and, you know, give a befitting farewell to one of theirs. Brought down by the same colonial administration. Today, all the papers are awash. 16 of them are unaccounted for. Just like Wazizi, they cannot account for 16 of them. Are we going to completely sit down and say nothing and rather be asking that Mama Mundi, who has been with them, who has been enabling their actions, should be released? I want to join my voice to the voices of those who are asking for Mama Ama Mundi to be released as long as I see those same voices asking for the release of these 40 boys and that they account for the other 16 that are not yet accounted for at this point in time. All lives matter. Like I said 
in my previous communication, and I'm repeating here, I will be the last person to promote any violence on any individual. No, I won't do that. But I will also be the last person to stand by and watch people give the impression that some lives matter more than others. Don't forget, there is none of these persons that will go beyond six feet. All will generally be six feet. All. There's no will be two feet because you're a big politician, one feet because you're a senior politician, half a feet because you're almost next to Paul Bia or next to a demigod and things like that. No, we are all humans. There is none that will go with anything because we came to the world with nothing. And we will all, without exception, go back with nothing. A clear determination of the fact that all lives matter. So all Southern Cameroonian lives matter. My people, I want to see this outrage across the board in Southern Cameroons. From Bota, through Akwaya, passing through Benakuma, through Mbekong, Ajati, to Bamenda, and then to Boya. Let the outrage reign for the release of these 40 boys. At least we know where 24 are right now. But the other uh, we, the other 16 need to be accounted for. My people of Ambazonia, we must say enough is enough to this. We must say enough is enough and we cannot continue to accept it. Don't close your eyes today because you say among those 40, none is from my family. Because by the time they get to your family, the other people whose family members they are will also sit and be watching you. Because if we stay quiet, we will each have our turn at the barbers. If we stay quiet, we will each end up blowing our fingers. We must continue to forge on with the spirit of solidarity. That is what will move us forward. That is what will give us the victory that we seek. That is what will give us the freedom that we seek. Freedom is not free. That's why by day and by night, we count the cost and stand ready to pay the price. My people of Amazonia, I say this and I reiterate. Number one, every piece of information you find, before you start spraying it around like, I don't know how to describe it, do a little verification. Always. They want us to turn our eye against the church. They want us to turn our eye completely against the church. Mbaakuro, just like you all, we have instances we disagree with the church. Instances we are dissatisfied with the actions of church ministers or with the actions of clergymen and women. In my last communication, I was absolutely unflattering because I made clear that it is not all right for the church to demand the release of Ma Mundi that happened long after the capture of 40 bike riders. Family heads, some of them would 10, 12 IDPs in their homes that they feed. It's not all right, but that does not translate into an open conflict between Ambazonia and the church. We must work together. We must continue to remind the clergy of their duty and what they have to do to the, to the community. A lot of them went through ordination. And during that ordination, they took vows to stand for the poor and the downtrodden, to stand for the vulnerable people in their community, to stand for truth and justice, most especially, to stand for truth and justice. And that is all we ask of them. And we must continue to remind them until they begin to do right, like it is happening elsewhere. My people of Amazonia, before I move on, 
into the real issue of this communication, of course, we all watched that uh, the president of neighboring La Republic du Cameroon, Mr. Paul Bia, is back. You can see from uh, this picture, he came back uh, earlier today. I mean, earlier as per my time, I think he touched down here only about four, between four and five p.m. And you can see from this picture that unlike when he was departing, that, um, you know, you don't have this crowd at the airport, it was just a car locked that a few people, of course, as I'm going to illustrate in a short while. This time around, there are quite a lot of people at the airport today. You have uh, at least the the uh, the other nonagenarian called uh, Marsenian Jifenji of the Senate standing there. I like us to take uh, a look at how they were faring at that place before I get to what I want to say. So if you see in this video, that is not defending myself, moving towards uh, the aircraft. At least we are all accustomed to the way he is moving. We all know that uh, I mean, it's absolute vegetable. But I want us to see how Bi himself does. This time it's an improvement on when he was going. But you see, he too is moving now like somebody who is blaming because they have to this thing. I said in my last communication, they had to make this trip to uh, to Geneva at all costs to go and manage to get you know i mean some of the best medical uh, or doctors medical doctors in the world to touch him to give him the necessary uh, uh, <laughs> uh dosage and i want to pump him all kind of medication to raise him a bit just so that he should be able to stand one hour 30 minutes of parade uh, this 20th May, that's, that's tomorrow, to celebrate a lie, a lie called national unity or a, a lie called the unitary state. So if you look at this picture, you will see this is when he was departing. Of course, you can see that is the car right under the medicalized aircraft because he could not really stand moving like you saw him moving now. So he had at least a lot of pumping in him and all whatnot. So he could manage, at least manage somehow to walk down the the uh, the stairway of the aircraft, so to give the impression to people that no, I'm still okay, I'm still sound and strong. He said this when when he was going, so it's absolutely different. All of that suffering just because he wants to come and be able to give a big lie, some semblance, some semblance of you know of uh, uh, should I say. Uh, it should give the impression that that lie is the truth. So the parade, of course, is going to happen at the 20 May Avenue. And uh, like I pointed out earlier, it's going to last about 1 hour 30 minutes to 1 hour 45 minutes maximum, unlike the previous years. And like I said in my previous communication, despite all what they have injected in him here and there to make him at least sustain a little while, the motorized infantry uh, battalions are not going to march. You're not going to see those military vehicles marching past because he, if they are marching past, he must stand and he can't stand. Even five minutes, he can't make it. He can't stand. That is why you will not have those vehicles passing. That is why, you know, the various uh, um, groups are going to march. The, the number of lines have been reduced so drastically. Even the police, a lot of things that happened in the past will not happen tomorrow. That is the beginning of the end of the big lie. And we know that on two, on two occasions, they didn't have it happen because they didn't have that stamina. But they said going for a third time is going to become really endemic. So that is why they have to do everything to have Mr. Paul Bia come sit there. But at the same time, you know, this year, there is an innovation they wanted to bring in. That innovation they want to bring in is simply transform Bia officially into an emperor and a demigod. That's why you see the Guardian Post says, uh, May 20th, March passing, your own the government imposes tough conditions on political parties. Those tough conditions include doing what? Number one, that the political party, no political party shall carry the effigy of the leader of their party. None. All political parties must carry the effigy of Mr. Paul Beer. Listen to that. All political parties must carry the effigy of Mr. Paul Bia, number one. All leaders of all 
uh, militants or supporters of of political parties, including the opposition political parties, must have to wear some particular kind of shoes. That's what is prescribed in that text. At the same time, all leaders of political parties must not carry any slogan that is not approved by the commission. Any slogan must be approved, must be seen, and, you know, must be accepted before it is carried. In fact, there is so much that is given in that package. And everything they say must be to glorify to glorify Paul Beer. So in reaction to that, officials of the opposition SDF party who had earlier agreed that they were going to participate decided that they were not going to be part of the celebrations anymore. And of course, something interesting happened. Why am I getting into this? Because it concerns a political party that had its support base in the southern Cameroons and that that political party continues until today to demonstrate beyond reasonable doubts that they are not they have never had the interest of the people of the southern Cameroons at heart because the people of the southern Cameroons have continually made clear we don't want to have anything to do with the day which, number one, not only represents a lie, number two is a day that reinforced, reinforced the colonization of our territory. It is the day that simply disappeared our territory from existence. And so the opposition SDF party, its actions and the things that happened to it, its fortunes or misfortunes in La Republic du Cameroon will always have some degree of relevance. And so it came to pass that today, against all expectations, and of course, before it happened, I already had the information that the first national vice chairman of the opposition SDF party, Mr. Joshua Osi, of course, he is no longer, uh, is no longer a strange name for Ambazonians because that name today has come to represent more than just oppression, more than just betrayal, and more than just enabling what La Republic of Cameroon is visiting on our people, the carnage, the name O.C. Joshua. It represents worse than all of that. I should even say the name O.C. Joshua today is even worse than the name Paul Beer. That is one of the persons who let a group of misguided MPs to write to the government of the United States claiming that normalcy had returned to Cameroon, claiming that normalcy had returned to our land, the southern Cameroons, and that everything was in order, and that they should not grant the temporary protected status to protect our compatriots from going back to find themselves in Mr. Paul Bia's dungeons, where they are likely to be used by Mr. Paul Bia for his dinner. Joshua Osi. Today, the same Joshua Osi, because of his closeness to the regime and because of his arrangements, he's looking at the power sharing deal ahead with Frank Beer. And when Frank Beer becomes president, he is going to become the imposed new slave. At the start building, he had to pull his weight to get Mr. John Frundy to come out with the release that I'm presenting to you here on my screen. And today, Mr. John Frundy comes up with a release indicating that the SDF party has to participate in the March Past Parade even under the obnoxious conditions granted by La Republique du Cameroon. That SDF militants will carry the effigy of Mr. Paul Bia. SDF militants will carry placards and the slogans crafted for them by Mr. Paul Bia, CPD and party and all the likes. This is a release by Mr. Frundi. And in this same release, Mr. John Frundi pretends that he is not aware that duly elected officials of his party at regional level had published releases indicate, indicating that they will not participate. They will not take part in the 20th May parades across the country. Mr. Frundi refers to unfounded social media posts claiming that they will not participate. Whereas these are not simple 
simple uh, social media posts. No, these are not tracks. They are decisions with names and signatures clearly signed by officials of his party, like the one you find here on the headed paper. This is the, 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 the president of the SDF Central Region making clear that the SDF will not take part in the May 20th parade. Absolutely clear. And it is not just a track because at the end of that, his name is right there, visible there, Emmanuel Ntonga, and this was signed on May 18. That was yesterday, May 18, 2022. The president that is signed the President Regional SDF Sound. And when Mr. Fundi therefore refers to uh, unfounded social media posts, it's embarrassing. It doesn't end there. There is yet another one which I received here. This is from the SDF uh, West Region. And this was also dated the 18th of May, yesterday. And it is signed here by uh, Changop Florent, the President Regional West, SDF West. There is yet another one that unfortunately I was not able to lay hands on before this broadcast from Jean-Michel Nietzsche, the president of the SDF Littoral. And so therefore, my people, when you find this, you understand exactly why things happen the way they happen. Because Mr. Frundi turned against his people and finds himself now as an IDP in Yaoundé, hosted by the same Paul Bia who was after his life many years ago, and the people of the Southern Cameroons were protecting him. Because today he's guarded by the B of that same regime. Of course, they now will give him some stipend and dictate to him, you must do this. And of course, you should be able to understand why. Because in the psychic of La Republique du Cameroon, the SDF represents an Anglophone party, as they call it. Represent an Anglophone party. So the absence of the SDF from May 20th celebration to them will mean that absolutely it's a 100% boycott. That is the psychology. And that is why they had to pick Aaron boy Joshua Osi and remind him that he was made question by the CPDM. Remind him that he has deals with the reminding him of all the millions that have doled out to him and reminded him of his ambitions in the next republic or the third republic of La Republic du Cameroon where Frank Bia intends perhaps to give him the position of chief slave. And so on counts of all this, O.C. Joshua had to activate all the pressure possible and put it to bear on Mr. Fundi to issue what he has issued. And of course, it has come to pass that the local officials of the SDF in Bafusam, in Douala, and in Yaoundé have doubled down that they will not take part in the parade. What is left now to know is whether Joshua Osi will have to spend the entire night of today looking for people from left and right to hire and give them SDF uniforms, obviously CPD and militants, and give them SDF uniforms to go and march because he has to keep his own side of the bargain. My people of Ambazonia, my dear people of the Southern Cameroons, all this are a clear demonstration of the fact that by our resilience, by our determination, and by our focus on our goal, which is attaining independence, we have put La Republic du Cameroon and all its apparatchiks in our territory in total confusion. How many of those so-called elite that you know are getting into those mobile things, rushing to our various villages to come and perpetuate that lie? They can't do it anymore because the boys in the bushes found the code. Yes, they found the code. So consequently, they can't try again. They will all stay here. I will not be surprised to see Mr. Frundi in some feet or seventh row at the 20 May Boulevard at the Tribune, where CRTV will struggle to capture him from some place to show that he later même là. Oh, how are the mighty fallen. Humpty Dumpty. My people of Ambazonia, all the signs are clear indications 
of the grounds we have covered. Take this seriously. Revolutions occur usually when conditions begin to become better. Revolutions occur usually when conditions begin to become better. That is in the case where they have not started. But liberation movements like ours accelerate when the oppressor begins to recognize the need to bend. But you must be able to identify the nature of that bending. That takes me now, therefore, to the pronouncements of Mr. Maurice Camto. When we look at this paper, and there's an article in uh, Timescape magazine, I'm going to share the URL. You can go there and look, at, look for that uh, article to get exactly what Maurice Camto says. So he says, Camto says, as you can find here, Camto says decentralization too little, too late to solve anglophone crisis. My people, I want us to remember that early in this movement and in 2017, Maurice Camto became famous for going on several television channels to say the Cameroon affairs on his tour. Meaning, as far as Cameroon is concerned, that done with their history, the country has evolved, evolved from you know, wherever it was, through a federal system, through uh, a United State, uh, 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 I mean, a United Republic, and then to a unitary state, and there is no going back. That was Maurice Camto. He even went ahead to describe us, Southern Cameroonians, as dishonest and simply troublemakers. The same Maurice Camto said loud and clear that any mention of a return to federalism would be anathema. Surprise today, therefore, that the same Maurice Camto comes and claims that he has said from time immemorial that they should sit down and have some good dialogue. That he has said from time immemorial that there should be frank discussion, that they should allow people who call anglophones to sit among themselves and talk among themselves and determine what they want. Really, poor Christian Cardinal Tumi simply wanted an opportunity to organize an all anglophone conference free in Boya. To have the opportunity to have their same people to discuss among themselves and then it was going to be an opportunity for all their parishes to go there and find what to say. But because the Republic of Cameroon does not trust anyone, none, I said this before, yeah, even the con man, Soxas and Congo, learned it the hard way. Yeah, the flip-flopping number learned it too the very hard way. There are so many of them who are learning it the hard way. Agbon Congo Bala is learning it the very hard way because I can remember him virtually crying almost in tears at the so-called Grand National Dialogue at which he was literally begging they should just mention federalism. At the end of the day, even the special status that they gave them, to this date, none of them knows what was supposed to be in that special status. And to this date, no one is talking about it again. They all learned it the hard way. The very hard way. So today, when you find Maurice Camto come up to say, decentralization, he believes is too little, too late. And says, that even the spatial status is of no value because it has no clear -cut definition. No one knows what is inside there. It cannot solve the problem. And then goes further. This Tim Maurice come to, to say he believes that the first thing to do is to return to a federal system. Oh my goodness. But he is so smart and intelligent enough not to define the kind of federal system he is seeking a return to. This is the first red flag that you should look at. If he were saying he wants, first of all, a return to 1961. Then you say, oh, yeah, he has defined what he's talking about. But his intentions are betrayed in the ambiguity that he projects. I'm not analyzing this because I'm interested in, uh, in the Federation. No, I want those who continue to 
harbor that idea of ever having anything to do with La Republic du Cameroon, be it a federation or a confederation, to note the statements made by Camto, to realize how deceptive they are. Don't jump. The skull dog is big. Are you about to be misled yet again? It takes us back to what I said a while ago. Anytime you settle for less than you deserve, you end up with less than you settled for. We deserve nothing short of independence. We were a UN trust territory, just like La République du Cameroon was a UN trust territory. For those who seem to have forgotten, the same status, the same status in the books of the United Nations. We were a UN trust territory, deserving of independence. It was reaffirmed by the African Union Union's Human Rights Court in the Banjul in 2009 that the people of the Southern Cameroons are a people recognized as a people under international law. If you are recognized as a people under international law, you are deserving of the right to self-determination. It is inalienable. It is a right. No, it's not a privilege. Our quest to take back our country, we are not seeking a privilege from anyone. We are simply taking our right, asserting our right to self-determination. You need to know that. Because if you don't know those truths, you'll be thinking at some point that, well, maybe it's going to be a privilege if we get independent. It is not a privilege. Independence for the people of the Southern Cameroons, for the people of Ambazonia, is a right. A right recognized under international law. No one should make a mistake on this. So when Maurice Camto, therefore, says he will favor um, a return to a, to a federation, doesn't specify. You ask him, when well, you say, okay, that's a good thing, want to go towards that. You get there and say, okay, it's a 10-state fed uh, federation. That is another name for the decentralization they have in place now. That's just the next name. We'll tell you a four state federation in which you have uh, what they call Northwest and West in one state, Southwest and Litoral in another state, and then the center and the other people in one state, and then the Grand North in another state. Of course, they have pushed and floated that idea. That is when they make our annihilation complete. That is why you notice that in the title, I'm talking of Maurice Camto's Poisoned Chalice. Yeah. That's why I'm calling it Maurice Camto's Poisoned Chalice. Maurice Camto is not speaking in isolation. He is being advised, has been advised by the French. Say this. Learn them through this. And I'm coming back to yet another reason why he would do that. Because if we don't have a clear understanding of all this, some few in our midst get excited, get misguided, and then the next minute you see yourself dragging us into the same gallows that we are almost emerging from. Maurice Camto says he will favor a situation where Anglophones, I want to use the words he, use, he uses, will sit among themselves first, discuss among themselves, take a common position, and after they must have taken this common position, then they now come for a kind of dialogue, uh, for a kind of dialogue that uh, he feels should be facilitated, facilitated by, uh, you know, the United States of America, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, uh, the African Union, and uh, the United Nations. And according to him, he says, if these powers or these institutions, that these countries and these institutions are present, then whatever is agreed to will be implemented. The next call doc. Now, why does Maurice come to say this? Because he has heard us over and over and over make clear that we will never have any discussions only between us and La Republic du Cameroon for any form of resolution, it will not happen. He has heard us say clear that we will only have a clearly and internationally mediated peace settlement, giving us the opportunity to agree 
with La Republique du Cameroon on the terms of separation. They go their way, we go our way. Maurice Cantor has heard that, and so he puts those little flattering clothes on people say, oh, yeah, this is interesting. What is the business of France and all this, though? We are seeking for mediation, not asking for some international facilitators to come and sit down and watch us talk with like people and say, small brother, we will do this, we will do this. They say, yeah, they have said that they, will, that they will do this. We are witnesses. We will make sure. Oh, really? Listen, my people. I, Ba'akuro, as an individual, the consortium, that prestigious institution, that movement that I have the opportunity to lead, we have made clear that we were not going to be part of that Swiss initiative or dialogue the way it was for the same reasons I'm evoking here. Because just like Camto, they make clear they are facilitators and not mediators. Facilitators and not mediators. These are two separate concepts. Pick up your dictionary, go search. You know someone who's... Uh, an expert in international relations, pick your phone, give them a call. I'll come back to this on this platform with uh, scholars more seasoned than myself in these matters so that they would take time to explain to our people the difference between facilitation and mediation. Of course, we had the opportunity to talk with the representative of the Swiss Federal Ministry of Foreign Affairs during the CDN initiated uh, retreat in Toronto, Canada. And we asked him, we asked him, Claire, what are you? I think this question was specifically asked by Yamagi Kilo. Of course, you know Yamagi Kilo is a seasoned diplomat for having represented the UN system in a country. I guess this, I hope this makes the sounds in our minds. She was a coordinator of the UN system in a country. She's not a child. She is the one that asked this question to the representative of the Swiss Federal Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Toronto. Said, can we know clearly who you are? Are you mediators? Is Switzerland a mediator or a facilitator? And the answer was unequivocal. That the Swiss are facilitators. This takes us back to the statement issued by the Swiss Federal Ministry of Foreign Affairs in 2019 and in June, on June 24, when they were announcing that they were to broker peace between the two parties. They said they were going to be brokering peace or to be facilitating peace discussions between the government of Cameroon and its opposition. That was the statement. So it is therefore not different from what Maurice Camto is talking about. I'm taking all this time to break this down so you understand, so we all understand and be on the same page so that nobody should say tomorrow that I did not get a clear understanding of what happened. I did not get a clear understanding of what those statements he made meant. That's why I take time to break down carefully carefully and that is why you should share this communication as much as possible let every other southern cameroonian have the opportunity to understand this you may even end up consulting with other people more knowledgeable than myself who will make the understanding even you know much better of what those statements are and so when maurice came to make such a shift you start wondering, but what has happened? Some say, hey, 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 we have hammered them and hammered until they have started shifting. No, they aren't shifting just yet. They are moving to the next level of the game. They're simply moving to the next level. Because they see that at this point, they are overwhelmed. They thought they could do it by force, but it's like force will not work. They should return to the books, go back to the drain box and change level. Take it to the next level where they are convinced that what the 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 defeat they pulled in Fumban in 1961, they can attempt it again now. Why are they so hopeful? 
are so convinced they can attempt it again now because they have all those who are educated and have been working with them for a long time with Southern Cameroonians who will come to fool us, who will come to help them fool us. But they forget that this is a never again generation. My dear people of Amazonia, as long as I live, I want to bring my face closer so that you see me making this pledge. As long as I live, breathe this air, drink water, eat and have sound mind and brain, I will be on this platform day in, day out to explain these things and to open our eyes, to provoke our thoughts, so that even where I say which is incomplete, it will cause us to go out there and research and get better informed. We must continue to stay awake. We must continue to stay awake. That is the weapon of the weaker force against an entire system like it is our case. We must use our brains at all times. We will not realize Ambazonia if we use the heart. This person saying this is my friend. I like him. He's my leader. I like him. That's all. Listen to him. That one saying it is not my friend. He's not my leader. Ah, he's even opposing my leader. He's opposing my ideology. I will not listen to him. Forget about all of those things. We are here on this platform as a marketplace of ideas. And I wonder when you listen, if you doubt, go and do further research. That is the purpose. That is the intention of my communication. To provoke our thoughts. To open our, our, our minds. To... Uh, should I say, to stimulate our critical thinking so that at the end of the day, we will never be duped. We will get a fair bargain of what we want. And then now, on to yet another reason why Maurice Camto will do this. My people, don't forget, La République du Cameroon at the moment, as we are speaking, is in a powder magazine. The country is on what they call in French, un qui vive. That is, anything, I mean anything, can happen at any moment. The succession of Mr. Paul Bear, the battle for his succession is open. And nobody is fighting it again under the, the, the tables. They are fighting it in the open. That is why you see the camps are clear. Even right at the presidency of the republic, I said it here. The civil cabinet is the camp of the Bulus. The Secretariat General is the camp of the Nangas. Okay? The Bulus are from the south. The Nanga are from the center, from Nanga Eboko. Two clear cut camps right at the presidency of the Republic. That is still only among the Betis. I've not come yet to the camp of the people of the Grand North who are swearing that never again. Would they tolerate a Betty regime in that country? The West, of course, Maurice Camto is struggling as much as possible to get the people of the West say their own word and even want to be the one at the helm. When we listened to uh, Mr. Osman May, who spoke from the North, he made clear that they were going to find ways of using Maurice Camto, of using the West, of using Maurice Camto. In the battle for the succession of Mr. Paul Beer. And therefore, in all their calculations and those discussions, none of them had hitherto mentioned the Southern Cameroons. And a lot of people came to the quick conclusion that, oh, they already know that we are a separate country. Nay, not true. They were thinking, they were calculating. So Maurice Camto right now tells himself. The proverbial story that if you are drowning, you are in a river drowning, and you meet a snake and it can take you out of the river, hang on to the snake. When you both get onto the shores, sure, when you are already on, uh, on, on uh, I mean, on safe shores, you can begin the fight. But inside the water where both of you are likely to drown your allies, that is exactly what is happening. So for Mr. Camto, he badly also needs us as allies. His party is not boycotting 20th May. And I don't know if they're effectively going to boycott. Sometimes they announce and they end up not boycotting. Remember his party boycotted 
the, uh, the past elections on grounds that the crisis in the southern Cameroons or the ongoing genocidal war in the southern Cameroons was so intense that they could not go participating at elections when all of, all of that has been a permanent struggle to woo us. He needs allies to attain his objective, which is power. Today, making those statements, he needs those who still have lingering thoughts of federalism in their minds, in our midst, to ally with him, to help him take over power in the Republic of Cameroon. By the time he takes over that power, he will remind you that those who believe in the promises of politicians have only themselves to blame. Yes, that he who believes in the promises of politicians have only themselves to blame. I'm sure we all remember or we all recall the story of the ape that met the lion in a ditch. And this lion had been in the ditch three days running. Ever the animal that came, he cried for help. They said, no, I can't help you because if you come out, you're going to take me for, for dinner. And finally, this ape accepted to help the lion. After the lion said, no, I can't do that. Convince him, no, by doing that to me, you're a friend. I can't do that. But at the end of the day, as soon as the ape got the lion out of the ditch, what did the lion do? Boom, held him. And the ape said, but you promised, you know, and the lion asked him, I have been inside there for over three days. I have not eaten anything. You should try and understand. Look, when they say these fables, it's not just for us to listen to them and laugh. Wah, 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 wah. They are fables. And by definition, fables tell us things that they use, um, you know, the animal world to say exactly what is happening in our world. So those fables are actually stories that happen. So by the time those of you who are still harboring thoughts, lingering thoughts of federalism in your minds, ally with Mr. Maurice Camto and help him to ascend to his power, he will turn around and remind you what he has said before, that the history of Cameroon had evolved and Cameroon would not backtrack. Do you understand me? Is it clear now? Oh, let me ask you like the Amber Boys. Eclair? Eclair no? My people of Ambazonia, my people of Southern Cameroons, no make error. Don't you ever play the fool. At that time, what will you do? You have given him the opportunity, one, to accede to power, two, to recollect his people, three, to put in place a sane and sound administration, and four, to be able to have the possibility of overcoming their own crisis and now focusing only on completing the annexation of the Southern Cameroons. In the case of the fable I was narrating a while ago, it took the genius of the tortoise to come say, no, you, this tiny ape, you are able to Bring this huge elephant, this, uh, this huge lion from the ditch up here. How did he do it? He said, no, I sent my hand. He said, no, 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 it's not true. You are lying. The lion said, no, he did. He said, no, you are lying. I tried to convince him that if you really mean it, that that is what happened, then jump back into the ditch and let him pull you back out so that I'll be convinced. And of course, the lion foolishly jumped back into the ditch and the tortoise told him, okay, oh yeah, you are free, you can go. If we get into this stupidity, and find ourselves being pounded once more by now a, a, a third La Republic du Cameroon Republic manned by Maurice Campto. I wish sure we'll be lucky enough to have the blessings of a tortoise that will come from somewhere and rescue us. No, my people, you don't take chances. I said on this platform before that when people tell you who they are, believe them the first time. When someone tells you who he or she is, believe them the first time. Don't take chance and say, oh, maybe he has changed. No, because no matter how much it rains on a tiger, the waters will never wash off its spots. The spots will remain there, visible, 
in sin. This is the reason I raise all of this. This is the reason I take time to analyze piecemeal, gradually, so that we all move together, so that we are all sensitized, so that we are all informed. And in this way, we as a people will continue to take the right decision, which is focusing our attention on our independence, focusing all our attention on our freedom. Maurice Camto was clear when he spoke the first time. He was not, he did not, he said clearly that Cameroon's history had evolved. The Cameroon had déjà fait son histoire. On ne peut pas rentrer là-dessus. Simple. That was the response. Even to, he was talking about federalism. So my people, make no mistake. And take this home. The settlement of the ongoing dispute or conflict between La Republic du Cameroon and the once independent state of Southern Cameroons will be through an internationally mediated settlement. Internationally mediated settlement. Listen clearly. Not through a facilitation. Listen. Make the difference between the two words. That is why Swiss peace spent a lot of time in La Republic du Cameroon trying to see how to create synergy between the civil society in La Republic du Cameroon and the civil society in the Southern Cameroons for a vive ensemble. Does that make sense? That is why Swiss peace, when they started, they went to the Southern Cameroons in Boya and gathered all the civil society organizations they, they, they could, including the church, and invited Comrade Abdul Karim. He was in Boya. And when Abdul Karim got there and saw and heard what was happening, he was so furious and frustrated because he had all along lived the lie that the Swiss were coming in to mediate peace talks between the Republic of Cameroon and the Southern Cameroons. And that's why I said once that Comrade Abdul Karim should please come and tell the people of the Southern Cameroons why he was so infuriated in Boya. Once you find yourself in a situation that is erroneous, the most important thing to do is not just to keep digging and going and thinking that somewhere along the line it may change from being the bad thing it is to the good one that you hope for. No, it will not change. It will not. That is why it took rebellion. I mean rebellion. For Chris Anu, who had perpetrated this lie too of how oh, the La Republic of Cameroon had given mandate this and that, to come back after he was already in rebellion to finally tell the people of the Southern Cameroon, at least he did that on my platform here, that he spoke to people in government of the Republic of Cameroon who finally confirmed to him that the Republic of Cameroon had never given any mandate for any mediation and that they don't have any intention of ever doing that. Some are still harboring and nursing these thoughts in their minds. Evolve, my people. Evolve. Evolve. Because that is what will give us the focus that we desire. What Maurice Camto is saying is not different from what they have been saying, but now they are simply moving to the next level. We have to stay awake. We have to stay vigilant because that is how we will succeed in attaining our objective of freeing the Southern Cameroons and of delivering independence to our people. No one, I mean no one, should fool you or fool any one of us that it's going to be otherwise. Let us stay focused. Let us continue to be people who think. Don't always take anything at the face value. That's why when I come here and talk, I don't mind the stones that some throw at me because I'm disagreeing with positions that they are holding. I want to provoke everyone, even you who are about to throw me those stones to give what you are believing in another thought. Let us keep thinking and thinking hard 
until we think our way into freedom. While those who are on the ground holding it tight are holding. Those who are respecting the ghost towns and the lockdowns are doing so. Those who are putting in their finances are doing so. Those who are knocking at doors all over the world are doing so. Those who are congregating here and there to put together what is needed to fill our liberation movement are doing so. Let all of those who can be thinkers continue to think hard and bring up the ideas that will help us think our way into freedom. That is how we will make it. And that is how we will get there. I am convinced that we will get there sooner than later. To God be the glory. And especially, don't go out this 20th May. 